Come on, if you know you need Jesus, give him some praise today. Give him some glory today. If you know you need him above all things, above everybody else. See, I don't need or need anything else. I don't need some 12-step program. I don't need some, I don't need more money in this world. I mean, some me might, but I need Jesus above all things. I need, I need him. Maybe you came here today with, with some need in your life. Maybe you showed up with some serious need in your family or in your health, in your mind. Maybe you have, I don't know what it is, but God knows exactly what it is. Not only does he know what your need is, he knows the answer. He is the answer. Jesus wants to give you what he has. He has peace for you today. He has freedom. He has forgiveness for you today. And if you call on the name of Jesus, I believe you will have your answer. Come on, how many are saying, I'm calling on the name of Jesus today. I need him. If you need Jesus in this place, give him a shout of praise and thanksgiving. Let him know. Come on, if you know you need him, you're not up here to heal a person. You're not here for a show. You're not here just for another Sunday. If you know you need Jesus, give him some praise today. Give him a shout. Let him know, Jesus, I need you above all things. I need you. Amen. Who's excited to be in the house of God this beautiful Sunday? We're so glad that you're here with us today. We're excited. I believe God has a word for you today. God has a word that's going to change your life forever. And I believe if we really get this message in our hearts and really apply it, I believe we will never be the same. Some of us are living life empty with no sense of direction or purpose. Today, all of that is going to change. Someone say, that's going to change. And I believe we're going to hear from the Lord today. Let's go before God. Let's pray. Bow your heads with me. Father, we are here because we want a message from you. We need your word. God, without it, there's no, no amount of good, there's no amount of fighting and grinding through life that will get us through life. God, we need you. We need your provision. We need your peace. We need your wisdom. God, we need your hope. Some, of, some people in here are full of worry right now. I could almost sense it in the room. There's someone in here just worried, stressed, full of anxiety. Jesus, you're the answer today. I pray that you would speak directly to their heart right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them right where they're at, God. Just right now, if you need peace from the Lord, just lift your hands in this place. Father, every hand that's lifted, God, we speak peace right now. Touch their heart. Father, where they do not know where to go, God, you are touching them right now. You're providing your way. Your word says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. So, Father, right now, we are praying and going before you in thanksgiving that you're a provider. You're a source of peace. You're a source of hope. You will make a way where there is no way, God. We trust in you. So we lean on you today, God. Speak to our hearts. I pray that everybody here, we would hear from you, God. I humble myself, God. This is not about me and my own opinion. This is all about you, Jesus. So speak today in Jesus' name. And we all say amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated. Give your neighbor a high five and tell him, I'm so glad to see you in church today. God is good. Everybody online, welcome to service. So glad you're with us. Just want to give a little shout out to our pastor, the best pastor in the world, Pastor Marco. Let's give him a, a hand. Pastor Marco, he's actually preparing next week. He'll be in Uganda, going to Uganda, and he's going to be ministering to thousands, uh, over a thousand pastors and leaders that are in need of a real mentor and, and discipleship and training. And I believe it's going to begin, and we're already seeing it now a discipleship revolution breaking out all throughout the world. So God is doing some incredible things. So again, our pastor, he's preparing. God is using him. So thankful to him. Um, my name is Christian. I'm the campus pastor here. I, praise the Lord. I got my beautiful wife in the front row. It's just such a blessing in my life. She supports me, loves me, prays for me. And I got my mom here today too. Shout out mom. Shout out mom. She's in the building. I got some of my nephews in the front row, too. I the whole fam bam here. I walked in holding a, a baby thing, one of those, um, what do you call that? 
car seat? I'm not, I have no, I've, I'm a rookie. I don't even got, I don't have kids yet. So I walked in carrying that thing and I'm just like, I'm practicing. I'll speak your life right here. I don't know, you never know. This is not an announcement, by the way. All right, let's jump into the word. I was speaking to Pastor Marco this week, and God woke up Pastor Marco, and, and he, he shared this phrase with him as soon as he woke up. He said, only one mission. Only one mission. Well, God was speaking, and I believe this is a word from God, so we gotta see what God is saying today. What God is saying is there is only one mission that we have in this world. Everything that we do as a church, all these services, the men's and women's home, all the ministry, all the needs we meet, everything we do as a church all comes under this one mission. Everything we do as a body of Christ, everything that we see, every, every, every ministry, every effort, my life mission is all based on this one mission, this one thing here. You want to know what that is? It's this. To be a disciple of Jesus Christ that makes disciples of Jesus Christ. Everything I do in this world, it, it, there's nothing more important than this here. You, you may be thinking, well, I thought my first ministry, I thought my main priority was my family. It is your family. It's making disciples in your family. Some of us are we're more concerned about making more money for our kids, but, you're, but there's no amount of money you can give your kids that can buy their way into heaven. Sure, make more money, get more checks, and earn, earn a better living for your kids. That's awesome. And I believe we should give our very best for our families. But if, we're giving, if all we're doing is putting food on the table, then we're really missing a, a, a crucial element in our homes. It's making disciples in our homes. I probably may be speaking to the fathers now, but this goes to everybody friends, families, all around us, a greatest mission we can have in life is making disciples. It says in Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, Jesus came and he told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. Jesus is pretty clear here. I have all control. I have all power in this world. There's no authority, no president, no king that has more authority over me. I have all the power and authority, and now I'm giving you a command. Now, if someone with that much authority came to you and saying, I command you to do something, we're probably going to do it. <laughs> Jesus is saying, I've given all this authority, and here's the command I'm giving you. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He says this, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus, we're talking about the king of kings. I can picture every king that's ever lived in all this world. All the glamorous, the, the jewels on their crowns and, and how, how, how much wealth all these kings had. I can picture them walking into a beautiful palace, just a beautiful tabernacle where Jesus is sitting on a throne. And every king walks in, removes his crown, and bows before the king of all kings, Jesus. And Jesus, this king of all kings, is looking to you and I today and saying, you are not a mistake. You are not a hopeless case. You are somebody that I've given life to. Not just given life, but I'm giving you a purpose today. I am calling you to be my disciple and to make disciples of all nations. Someone say, he's calling me. You know that the word disciple actually comes up in the Bible 269 times. That word disciple. The word Christian only comes up three times. You know what this is showing us? Some of us are more concerned with being a Christian, just being a believer, than we are a disciple of Jesus Christ. What's the difference? Well, a believer, there's a lot of people that believe. You could talk to anybody. Just talk to just about anybody you see in the streets. You believe in God? Yeah, I believe in God. I pray every day. And, 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 and you look at their life and you're like, are you sure? <laughs> There's people that say that. As a matter of fact, this is what's crazy. Demons believe in Jesus. 
They're no disciples, but they believe in the power of Jesus. The Bible says demons believe and they tremble at the name of Jesus. They not only believe and know that Jesus exists, but they believe in the power of Jesus. That's how afraid they are of his name. But it's crazy that we could be no better than a demon when we just say we believe, but we're not following Jesus. Sorry, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. I'm coming in heavy. I'm coming in strong. You're going to watch a game later, so I got to give you some heat this morning. You feel me? I'm just playing. The word disciples used this many times. Christians only use it a few times. What's the point here? The point is everything we do is for this purpose. All the giving we do in church is for this purpose. All the services, all the classes, all the ministry, every grocery bag we give away in our streets, every church we raise up in inner cities all throughout the world, world, every need we meet, every dollar we sow into this ministry is all for this one purpose, is fulfilling the only one mission that matters at the end of the day, making disciples of Jesus Christ that make disciples of Jesus Christ. You know what's incredible to think about is that Jesus came to this earth. He died and he resurrected. And, and we know that today. But the, the crazy reality, and this is going to sound crazy, the crazy truth is all of this could have been in vain if no one knew about it. What am I saying? Jesus' priority, one of his main missions, was to make disciples on this world. And he could have died and resurrected, but if Jesus did not have a disciple, uh, he had someone that he passed it on to, that he told to pass on to others. If he didn't have them, then we would not know about it today. All of this would have just been something that would have just been sitting out in, the, in, in, the, uh, in history books, but we would not have known. And so this is why it's so important that we carry on this mantle because if our kids and our kids' kids and our nephews and our our sons and our daughters are going to know about Jesus, then we got to step up and become disciple makers if we expect our families to walk this out. Some of us are, 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 we disciple our kids and our favorite football team. We're like, son, you're a Niner fan. He can't even talk it. He's sitting there chewing on his little chew toy. Huh? And you're like, you're a Niner fan, son. Say with me, Niner. Niner. And you have all this opportunity to speak life into your son. And we speak a football team. We speak a basketball team. We speak a trade. We speak tra- how to be a player. We speak how to, how to look good. We speak all these things. And what God is saying, yeah, you're teaching your son the wrong things I've called you to teach. But I've called you to teach them about me. To tell them about what I have done. To share with them that they can live for me. And they have a purpose in this world. The big question is, how do we fulfill the mission? How do we fulfill this mission to this only mission that God has given us? How do we do that? Well, before I answer that question, this was earlier in the first service. As I was in worship, God gave me this passage. And I believe this is from the Lord, and he wanted me to read this. This was not planned or prepped. I I, I texted the media team right before I went up and said, I'm going to read from this passage, and I believe God wants to speak through this. Turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to John 17. By the way, how many still got a paper Bible? You still got a paper Bible today. Ooh, that's cool. I like that. Shout out paper. (laughs) John 17 says this. I'm going to read through different verses. I'm not going to go straight from the top. Start with me at verse 3. It says this. And this is the way to have eternal life. To know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Verse 4. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now this is, just to give context, this is a recorded prayer that Jesus prayed before he was betrayed to go to the cross. So one of the last prayers that Jesus prayed, just imagine, you're going to get betrayed by those you love. They're going to send you, you're going to die on a cross, and you're going you're gonna to get nails in your hands, whips on your back. And one of the, what are you going to pray in that moment? What are you going to say to God in that moment? This is what Jesus prayed. Believe it or not, this prayer, you'll see all throughout it, it's covered in prayer for his disciples. It was so important to Jesus 
that Jesus went before the Lord in prayer and was saying, Lord, I'm, I'm taking this moment to pray for my disciples. Because all of this, my death on the cross, the resurrection, comes to nothing if they do not pass this good news message to others. What good is good news if no one hears about it? I got good news for you. What is it? Not going to tell you. Well, that's not good news at all. Good news is something that's heard. Good news is something that's proclaimed. Good news is when you could tell somebody, I know you're in your sin. I know you're in bondage. I know you're down and out. I know you're addicted. I know you're bound, but I know a God who set me free. I was bound. I was lost. I rejected him. I turned my face from him, but there was one day he met me in my darkest and my lowest moment, and he came and scooped me up and said, son, daughter, I got a plan for you. I have forgiveness for you. I got life for you. I got a way for you. I have a purpose for your life. That's some good news. But what good is that news if no one hears it? One of Jesus' last prayer, he prays for his disciples because this is so important. What he's about to do needs to be told for thousands of years to come in all nations, in all languages, everywhere. This needs to be told so he goes on in praise and he says this in verse 4, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Wait a second. I thought Jesus came to this earth to die on a cross and raise from our sins. I thought that was a work. But he's saying this prayer before he even gets to the cross. So what's the work he's talking about? What he's talking about here, the work that he completed is raising up disciples that will make more disciples. We talk about the death and resurrection of Jesus, but he spent three years every single day pouring into his disciples. And he's saying, I've completed that work. I've brought glory to your name by doing this. Skip ahead with me to verse 6. He says, I have revealed you to the ones you gave me from this world. I have revealed you from the ones you gave me from this world. Who did God give to Jesus? People from the world. It wasn't the big religious leaders. It was not the guys standing up on the microphone preaching. It was not the big, uh, the big shots. It was not the, the, the Jewish Sanhedrin. It was, not, it was none of these people. The ones that God gave Jesus at this time were the lowest of the low. They were ordinary people like you and me. They were fishermen. They were tax collectors. They were, tax collector is someone who was hated by even his own family. His family would disown him because a tax collector was someone who basically betrayed their own people and they would steal money. No one likes someone who's stealing your money. Someone steals your money, they're instant enemy number one. You're talking about tax collectors. You're talking about fishermen. You're talking about the lowest of the low. You're talking about ex-convicts. You're talking about ex this and ex that. What is God saying? God is saying, you, God, you have given me. You have given me the ones from this world, and I revealed myself to them. I revealed you to them. He's speaking still to us today. I've revealed myself to the ex-addict. I revealed myself to the ex-adulterer. I revealed myself to the ex-theft uh, 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 I did this last year. What, how do you call it? Thief. Ex-thefery guy. <laughs> I revealed myself to them, and I brought you glory in doing this. They were always yours. You gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Why am I taking time on this? Because some of us disqualify ourselves from this call, and we think that it's a, it's a job of a pastor or a preacher, but the reality is my job is to help equip you to do what God is saying right here. I'm not here to do it for you. I can't, I may, I may not be able to reach inside your home. I may not be able to reach your workplace. I may not be able to do those things, but you can, which is why God called you out of the world to himself to be a disciple that makes disciples. That's what he's done. So it goes on, that was verse six. Now go to verse eight, it says, for I, I have passed on to them the message you gave me. They accepted it and know that I came from you and they believe you sent me. It's just so good. Jesus is making clear. 
The only reason why they believe, the only reason they know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt that I've come from, from the Lord is because I passed on the message you gave me. Now, I, I, I've talked to people that have been very discouraged about ministering or sharing the good news or talking to someone about Jesus because they think, what if they say no? What if they, what if they, what if they reject me? Well, okay. What's the worst that can happen? They say no. But here's the thing. This makes it pretty clear. Our, our objective is not to do anything else except to pass on the message that Jesus gave us. The power is in the good news about Jesus. The power is in the gospel message. The power is not in my talent. The power, the power is not in how good I can formulate the words. As a matter of fact, the more fancy I try to get, the less power I get in it. I just need to stick to the script. Here's the script. Man, I was jacked up. Man, I was bound. Man, I was messed up. Man, I used to live this way. And then I met Jesus, and he saved me and set me free. I ain't perfect, but he is. He washed me from my sin, and now I'm forgiven. Now I'm not imperfect. Now I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven because of what he did for me. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you too. That's the message. That's the good news about what Jesus has done. This is the message we're passing on. And Jesus is saying, I've passed on this message to the ones you gave me. And they accepted it. And they know I came from you. And they believe you sent me. What God is saying is this. Just pass on the message. Just pass on the word that I gave you. Don't worry about trying to be fancy. Don't worry about trying to get all the power. The power is in the message. And I'm going to put the message in your mouth today. And God is saying, I'm going to give you a message to share with somebody. Come on, how many are ready to make some disciples out there in this world? <laughs> Go with me to verse 11. He says, now I am departing from the world. They are staying in this world, but I am coming to you, Holy Father. You have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. Jesus is, I love this. Jesus is saying a prayer. Think about it. He's about to go to the cross, and he's praying for his disciples. He's praying for those that are going to pass on this good news. He's thinking, he's thinking, and he's, 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 he's focused on those that are going to carry this message forward. There's so many other things he could have prayed for, but he prayed for his disciples. When he says, now I'm departing, but they're staying. Now, Jesus is with us today. The Bible says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. But physically, he had to leave so that we can share the good news of Jesus with those around us. Jesus left, but we're still here. Some people did not make it in 2024, but you did. Some of your friends and family are still here today. And it's up to us to speak up and to let somebody know about Jesus, and to, and to spread the good news about what he has done for us. This is what disciples do. And then goes on to say, skip with me to now verse 17. It says, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. We're made holy by his word, right? Verse 18, just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. Go with me to verse 20 and 21. It says, now, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all who will ever believe in me through their message. How incredible is this? Jesus is going to the cross, and he's not just praying for his 12 disciples, but he's now praying for every future disciple that will ever live. This is what's so beautiful. In that moment, Jesus was thinking about you. He was praying for you. And you know what you could tell? For, check it out. The verse literally says, I'm praying not only for those disciples, but for all who will ever believe. Someone say, that's me. That's us right now. We're in the Bible. So you could tell somebody, hey, you know what's crazy? I'm in the Bible. 
Yeah, wild. Watch, check it out. You can show them in this verse, Jesus was thinking about you. Jesus was praying for you, and it's recorded in, in the everlasting word of God. You're in the scripture, and he's saying, I'm not just praying for my disciples, but I'm praying for everybody here in 2024, here in San Bernardino, here online. They're going to watch it on YouTube, here in the church. I'm praying for them as they carry on this good news message about my love for the world. I'm thinking about them, and I'm praying for them. Jesus literally walked this earth praying for you. And we know that God was omniscient. He was all-powerful. He was all-knowing. So you better believe he was thinking about you. He was thinking about you. Someone say he was thinking of me. Verse 21, he says, I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and they may be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. Jesus is praying for his disciples the question I asked earlier is how do we fulfill this mission? Well, the first step we need to do is we need to become disciples of Jesus Christ. I cannot expect to make somebody something that I am not. It does not work. I can't ask somebody to walk the walk if I'm not walking the walk. I can't show someone how to live a lifestyle I'm not living. So only disciples of Jesus Christ can make disciples of Jesus Christ. Disciples of Jesus Christ accept the call to follow. We must accept the call. Someone say, accept the call. We got to accept the call to follow him as a disciple. We can't follow Jesus as a fanboy. Doesn't work. We can't follow Jesus as a groupie. Some of you guys follow all kinds of crazy people on Instagram. You're like, oh, that's so cute. You see all their pictures, see everything. So you follow celebrities, but do you know them? Do they know you? We can say we follow Jesus, but the question is, do we follow him? Do we know him? Do we spend time with him? It's a whole other, it's a whole other ball game. Look at Matthew 9.9. 9. Matthew 9.9 9 says this. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew, also known as Levi, sitting in the tax collector's booth. And he said to him, Follow me as my disciple, accepting me as your master and teacher, and walking the same path of life that I walk. And Matthew got up and followed him. He followed him as his what? Disciple. As his what? The word disciple means this. It's matheteo, which means a student that is committed to fully knowing and obeying Jesus' commandments. He's also committed to develop Jesus' lifestyle. He's committed to developing Jesus' character, his mind, his habits, and fulfill his mission to save the lost and make disciples on earth. That's a disciple. Now, that's a big role there, but that's what Jesus is calling us to follow him as. He, there's no other way to follow Jesus except by being a disciple of Jesus Christ. I know I shared that stat with you earlier that 269 times it's shared in scripture, the word disciple, and only three times the word Christian. You want to know why? Because it was just assumed. Christian and disciple were interchangeable back then. It was assumed. If, you're a, if you call yourself a believer, then you are a follower of Jesus Christ. But what we've done, we've called, what we've done nowadays, we've done a disservice to the name. And now we separate the two. And we created different levels. And we say, I'm a believer but I don't really take it that serious. I'm a Christian, but I'm not super crazy religious. And that's what we call it. We call it super crazy religious, and Jesus just calls it being a disciple. Jesus is saying, follow me. This is how you must follow me. This is how you must walk with me. There's no other way to follow me. There's no one foot in and one foot out. There is no negotiating with God. There is no compromised relationship with him. It's either you're all with him or you are against him. There's no middle ground. And the Bible even makes it clear, if you're not for me, you're actually working against me. If you're not living for me, your lifestyle is literally working against the kingdom mission of God to make disciples. Sorry, I know it's Super Bowl Sunday. I'm just trying to, we got to get this word. It says this, we must deny ourselves to become disciples of Jesus. 
Luke 9, 23 says this. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. If any of you wants to follow me, to be my disciple, to come after me, to be my follower, you must give up your own way. Someone's like, how many, how many here want to be a follower of Jesus? How many want to be a follower? Hands up. Look, I love that. And Jesus is like, okay, you got to give up your own way. And we're like, ooh. <laughs> there is no discipling your flesh, which is why you must leave it behind. Your flesh does not, has, your flesh does not want to follow God. Your flesh didn't want to come to church today. Your flesh wants to act out and cuss somebody out when they get crazy with you. Come on, don't play. Act all holy in church all of a sudden. You're like, I would never. I shall not. I'm just being real. We all have a flesh. We are living with the flesh. But the, the, the sad thing is, we, can, we, we don't recognize that we're in warfare right now. There's an actual battle going on. And what we must do is not surrender or submit to our flesh, but literally pummel our flesh into submission. That's the only way. And we got to be willing to give up our own way, our own ambitions, our own, our own mission in life to live for God's mission in this world. And here's a, here's a scary truth. If we're unwilling to give up our own way, then we are unfit to follow Jesus. Man. Lord, man, you're coming in strong today, Lord. You... Okay, how many people here you've ever wrestled in high school? You're the wrestler or something. All right, that's what's up. They raise their hand. They all raise their hands like this, like. I'm just kidding. Well, if you're done wrestling, you know this. It's going to take work. It's, it, you're, you're fighting. You're struggling the whole way through. It's a massive endurance fight to get that person to submit. There's no way you're going to approach the mat and you're ready for your, your match, and you're going to speak to the guy and say, hey, bud, I know we're fighting right now, we're wrestling, but if it's cool with you, could you just let me win? <laughs> if that's okay with you. You ain't never going to win no battles like that. But how sad is it we approach a spiritual warfare that we're in, pleading with our flesh, please, flesh, if it's okay with you, could, could I just kind of, be kind of holy today? No one accidentally lives more like Christ. It takes intentionality. It takes a fight. It takes going to war every single day. And I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. You may get a scar. You may get a battlefield scar here and there and a wound. But I'm telling you right now, with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can and will overcome every single temptation the flesh sends your way. The power of sin, the power of death will live under your feet because of the power of Jesus. Come on, we got to pummel our flesh into submission. There's no other way. Here's another thing. Some of us have a hard time with discipleship because we're trying to negotiate with God. God, I'll give you some of my life. I'll give you Sundays. I'll trade you. I'll see your Sundays with my alcohol addiction. I'll see your Sundays with my fling on the side. Come on, God, you got to work with me, God. And God is saying, I did. I did. As a matter of fact, I gave you everything. I left nothing behind for you. I gave you my one and only son. Jesus went to the cross and paid the terrible suffering death. Nails in his hands, crown of thorns on his head for you. You should owe that price. You should pay that price. But I paid it on your behalf. And there's nothing you could have done to pay for it. But I paid it for you. I gave you everything. What else should I give? And I believe God is saying here today that he loves you this much. If he would give you his one and only son, what else would he withhold from you? Nothing. He'll give you his peace. He'll give you his power. He'll give you his joy. He'll give you his love. Everything that you need, you can find it in the loving arms of Jesus Christ. He has it for you. Just come to him. And believe me, when you leave your old life behind, you're losing nothing. You're gaining everything. 
There's nothing you're losing. Man, if I leave my friends, I'm going to, no, you're not losing. Your, you're going to gain even better friends. Man, if I leave this addiction, no, 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 you're not losing your peace. You're going to finally gain peace for once and for all. You're not losing anything. And the Bible says anything you give up for his name's sake, he will return to you in a hundredfold. If you've ever given up a friend, you're going to gain better friends. If you've ever given up family, you're going to get a, a bigger family. If you've ever given up a job to follow God, he's going to bless you financially. Whatever it is you've given up for the Lord, he will return to you. This is how a disciple follows Jesus. But here's the scary thing. We either accept the invitation or we reject it and make excuses. You either accept it or reject it. There's no middle ground. Luke 14, 16 is a perfect example of this. This is a, a parable that Jesus shares. You can read all the way to verse 23, but I'm gonna just share a few verses. It says, a man was giving a big dinner and he invited many guests. At the dinner hour, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come because everything is ready now. He's speaking about this invitation that God is making to us today. This is a parable. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said to him, oh, I would, but I purchased a piece of land and I have to go out and I have to see to it. Please consider me excused. Then another one said, oh, I purchased five yoke of oxen and, and I'm going to try them out. Please consider me excused. And another said, I've been recently married, uh, I've recently married a wife and for that reason, I'm unable to come. Excuse after excuse after excuse. We all live with these excuses. We all have them. The challenge is, are you going to use it or not? Are you going to accept this call from Jesus or use an excuse and reject it? There's excuses. There's, we put, sometimes we put things over God, our material possessions. Sometimes we put a, a job or a work or a business over God. God, I can't. I can't do this. I can't live for you. I can't be a disciple. I can't do all these great things that I want to do in my heart because I got a lot to do. Sometimes we put relationships over God, like this third person who puts the, the marriage over the Lord. But the Bible says in Luke 14, 26, if you want to be my disciple, you must, by comparison, hate everyone else. That's heavy. Your father, your mother, your wife, your children, your brothers, your sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. That's deep. That's the kind of scripture that only gets two hand claps. Not, I'm just kidding. It's okay. I'm just saying a clap. But this is what the verse is saying. I don't want to confuse it. This scripture is not saying you got to hate people. God calls us to love. He says the greatest commandment is to love God above all else and love your neighbor as yourself. So, of course, we got to love. But the scripture is making very clear in comparison to you need to love God so much more that no one or nothing can compete for the love of God in your life. There is no competitor. There is no close second. There is no one that comes close. And there's no one that I struggle with loving more than God. No, I love God so much that in comparison, I love him so much, it's almost like I hate everyone else. That's how much I love the Lord. He's making clear, let me be your master. Let me be your Lord. Let me be your provider. Let me be the one that sets you free because I am the answer. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me, Jesus says. So now, what are some ways we can practice being disciples? Well, some ways I can practice being a disciple, I can enroll and complete Holy Warriors growth classes. What is that? Well, we got classes here at The Way that will train and teach and equip you to be a true disciple of Jesus Christ. They, yeah, where are all the Holy Warriors at? They're excited because... We have a whole wave of uh, students that are going to graduate in a couple weeks, and then we're going to launch a new one February 27th. But before we can lead others through the process, we must be willing to go through the process ourselves. Disciple making isn't do as I say, but do as I do. I know I got my mom here tonight. Shout out, mom. Shout out, mom. 
Mama used an analogy from her past. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> it's funny, though. We talk about it. She's not like this anymore. But back in the day, day, the BC days, she used to, I mean, she was living crazy. She'll tell you straight up. I mean, she'd do some crazy stuff in front of us. She'd be drinking, doing drugs, doing all kinds of stuff, craziness. And she would say, just because I do it doesn't mean you could do it too. How many of you use that with your kids? Okay, time to repent. Raise your hands and repent. Just because you hear me cussing doesn't mean you could cuss too. Just because I'm watching this, this is an adult thing, doesn't mean you could do it too. How many know that doesn't work? That doesn't work. Your kids are a lot smarter than that. They learn from how you live, not just from what you say. So I thank God. Let me just clean up that story. My, God, my mom, she's a woman of God now. She's on fire for the Lord. So now she can't say, do as I do and as I say. So I just want to leave, put that out there. But the truth is that, of course, we need to preach. Of course, we need to teach. But what's going to give your teaching and your discipleship making and your, uh, and your preaching to your family, what's going to give it power is when you back it up with action. Otherwise, your teaching is going to fall flat. And they're going to say, this is all fake. Because you say it, but you don't live it. Well... Three practical ways we can practice being disciples. Enroll complete holy warriors. Number two, get a daily growth book and study it daily. What is a daily growth book? Well, the daily growth book, it, it consists of 10 books of the Bible that we as a church are studying through this year. We're studying 10 books of the Bible this year. And it'll help us develop the habit of studying the word of God daily and keeping ourselves accountable. Number three, join a DG small group and attend weekly. What is a DG small group? Well, it's called a discipleship group. It's a group of two to 12 people. They meet on a regular basis, whether weekly, it could be, it could be Tuesday night, it could be Monday morning, whatever, whatever time the group meets. But you meet consistently to study the Bible, to take care of one another, to make friends, and to do life and ministry together, to be discipled and to develop into a disciple-making leader. How many are in a DG? You're in one and you love it. Man, look at all those hands that just went up. For those that are not in a DG yet, I am convinced that you become like the people you hang around. And, and you're wondering, how come I'm trying to live like Jesus, but, but I just can't do it? Well, it's probably because you're hanging around people that live like the devil. And anytime you surround yourself with people, you become like them. There's no way you can be in circles of, 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 of people and, 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 and be poured into with all, all just a worldly lifestyle. And I'm not saying we don't reach people and we don't love people. But the truth is, if you're willingly giving yourself to the influence of, of the world, then you will become just like the world. It's like you're, you're around a group of friends like, I just want to live for God, man. I don't know why I can't. Hey, could you pass the blunt? Okay. And you wonder why? <laughs> no, I believe that we're saying from this point on, I'm going to surround myself with the people that God has given me. I'm going to surround myself with people that are on fire. I'm going to surround myself with people that are not going to kick me when I'm down. But if I ever stumble or fall, they're going to lift me up. They're going to pray for me. And they're going to say, it's all right. I'm not perfect either. Let's get up and let's keep moving forward. I'm going to surround myself with people that are going to become lifelong friends. They're going to be there in my down moments. They're going to fight for me when no one else will. I'm going to surround myself with those people. That's the DG. So we say yes to that. The second thing, I don't have time, but I'm going to share it. I'm going to just read it to you. The second step, I know I'm, there's only two steps. How do we fulfill the mission? Number one, we become a disciple of Jesus Christ. And the second thing is say yes to the command to make disciples by leading a DG. You're saying, whoa, hold up. You just asked me to join a DG. Now you're asking me to lead a DG. Well, this is the Great Commission. This is what God is calling us to do. This is your only mission in life. If there is nothing else we accomplish except this, then you would hear these words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You, you made disciples the same way I taught you how. You made disciples. The only way to make disciples is to be intentional about it. What we're serious about, we put on the calendar. We schedule it. The big goal for our church this year it's to make, it's to develop 1,728 discipleship groups and leaders. We're expecting the biggest harvest this year as a church. And because we are 
because of that, we need even more leaders now than ever before to take care of them and disciple them. Your family will be in this church. Your unsaved loved ones will be here. But who's going to take care of them? Someone say, it's me. God is calling us to do that, to raise up disciples and to raise up disciple makers. I'll read one last scripture to you. Isaiah 6, 8 says, then I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send as a messenger to these people? Who will go for us? I believe God's still asking that question today. And he's asking that question to you right now. Whom will I send? Who will be my messenger? Fathers, fathers that have kids, Please, don't let the world disciple your kids. You step in and be the disciple maker in your home. Let's disciple our families. Let's disciple our friends. Let's disciple those loved ones. Let's disciple the hurting and the lost. I believe God's still asking this question, whom will I send? And then I said, the response is, here I am. Send me. See, God's not looking for the perfect candidate. He's not looking for the the Bible school graduate. If you're a Bible school graduate, praise the Lord. But that's not what's on God's list. You may have a, a very dark history. You may have a past that maybe you've been ashamed of. But I know something so good. The blood of Jesus can wash away all sins and to make you white as snow. God's not looking for all of this accolades and these talents and these gifts. He's looking for someone to say yes. Just say yes. And when we say yes, he backs you up with all of his power, all of his authority all of his goodness, all of his word. We need that. There's a guy in my my DG, he was here last service, his name is Derek. And he'd been in my my discipleship group faithfully. And then he just launched his DG, he just started a DG. And he told me, I did not realize how much I would grow just by leading a DG. And really, when he says leading a DG, what he's really saying is, I didn't realize how much I'd grow when I started making disciples like Jesus called us to. And he says, I'm I'm now more accountable because I know that there are men looking at my example to live by. He says, now I study the word at another level because I'm not just studying to feed me. I'm studying to pass it on to somebody else. Some of us in here today, you're at a stagnant point in your walk with God. You've lost fire, you lost drive, and you lost hope, and you don't know why. I'm doing the same things. I'm continuing to live for God. Here's why. I'll tell you why. Because God is saying, I've called you to go to the next level, to begin following the only mission I created for you, to make disciples. And until we make disciples, we won't see that power, that authority at another level. But those that accept the mission to make disciples, receive God's resources, receive God's anointing, receive his power, receive his word to go and do it. God will enable you to carry out his mission in life. He's calling you and I. So I'm going to make a call today. And the call is this. For those that are saying, "I, I, I hear the message. I hear what God is saying. And I'm ready to say yes to the mission in life that God is giving me. And I'm going to tell you this. If we were to train you, and we're not going to send you out to do it by yourself, but if we were to train you and equip you and give you all the tools that you need, will you say yes? And that's what we're going to do. We are going to train you. We are going to equip you. So by, by with show of hands, when I count to three, I want to ask you, those that are stepping up today, saying, I want to be a disciple maker. I want to tell others about the good news of Jesus. 
I want to reach people that God is sending my way. And I want to be a light in a dark place. If you're saying that's me, and if we train you, will you say yes? At a count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Just raise your hands all over this room. Wow, wow. Look at all those hands. Look at those hands, guys. I'm so proud of each and every one of you. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. I'm proud of you guys. Can you do me one more favor? And I'm not trying to embarrass you. Could you just stand to your feet? <laughs> this is a statement. Look, we want to give you a round of applause. Look at everybody that's standing right now. Let's clap for those that are making this decision to be. I'm so proud of you back there. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of you guys back here in the middle. Let's all stand to our feet. Everybody, let's all stand. And for those that raise your hand, I want you to do one more thing for me. If you raise your hand today, we want to pray with you. We want to bless you. We want to anoint you. And we want to get you connected to the training process. Could you make your way out of your seat and come to the front really quick? If you raise your hand, you said, I'm accepting the call. I'm accepting the call to be a disciple maker. Come on out of your seat, church. Let's clap for everybody that raised their hand. Look, they're coming from all the way from the back to the front. Come on, let's get excited. These are people that are stepping up to the mission that God is giving them. Let's get excited right now. Come on, church. Still coming, they're still coming, church. I need you all that I am at your feet to pour out my love. Yes. Praise you so we're gonna need we're gonna need some more leaders up here, DG leaders. If you're in my DG, I need you up here, please. Discipleship group leaders or ultra workers, just to pray, to connect with them. So if you came up here, I want you to look at me really quick. Just look at me for a quick second. We're going to help you. We're going to train you. And, and we're going to walk with you throughout this whole process. I am so proud of each of you. The call that, that you're accepting today is you're accepting the greatest mission you can live with in life. And that's to make disciples. This is a big day. This is like a graduation moment. This is bigger than our graduation. This is This is huge. Because we're saying, yes, God, I will do what you created me to do on this earth, to pass on the good news of Jesus. This is what we're called to do, guys. I'm so proud of you. You didn't reject the call. You said yes to the call. I'm going to make one more call really quick. If you're saying, I want to give my life to Jesus, I want to be forgiven of my sin. The Bible makes it clear that we've all sinned and fallen short. And the price for our sin is death which means eternal separation from God. The price we owe for sin is hell forever. But because God loves us so much, he sent Jesus to die on the cross and to pay for that sin because he loves you. Now he's giving you the option. Will you accept me as Lord? Will you let me lead your life? Will you leave your old life behind? Will you repent and leave your sin, leave your old life behind to follow me? If you do, I will save you. I will give you eternal life. I will forgive you of your sins. Anybody in here that's saying, I want to receive Jesus, I want to be forgiven, and I want to make him Lord of my life, just raise your hand. You're saying, I want to receive Jesus. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Anybody else? That, I'm proud of you. I see you guys. If you raise your hand and you're not up here, could you come up here really quick? We want to pray with you guys. We want to pray with you. Let's give them a hand for those others that are coming up today. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to dismiss right now. One second. Please put the code up here behind me. Holy Warriors. Holy Warriors, the other one, please. The other code, please. Holy Warriors 4. So this is what we're going to do. The person in front of you, they're going to pray with you. And also, we're going to get the right code. This is not the right one. There it is. I want you to scan this code. If you if, uh, scan this code, you can pull out your phone right now. Take the next step. If you're saying, I want to be trained to lead others and to make disciples, scan this code. Because you remove that mic stand for me, please? Scan this code, and you're going to make disciples. We're going to train you how to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Sign up for this class. It launches February 27th. Say it with me. Say February 27th. We're going to take this class. It's called Exponential Leadership. And we're going to train you to be a true disciple-making leader. Your life will never be the same again. You're going to grow beyond years that you've ever grown. Okay. Let's pray. As you're scanning, we'll pray real quick. 
Close your eyes, bow your heads. I mean, yeah, close your eyes, bow your heads. Pray with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for going to the cross on my behalf. You love me enough to take upon you all of my sin. I repent. Forgive me. I acknowledge that I've rejected you. But right now in this moment, I'm coming to you in faith and make you my Lord and my Savior. I receive you now to live in my heart and to make me a new creation. I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose from the dead so that I can be saved. Fill me with your spirit and from this moment forward, I'll never be the same. And Lord, I commit to making disciples, to fulfilling the mission that you have given me. I belong to you. Send to me those people that you have assigned for me to disciple. My family, my friends, those in the church, those in my city, I will disciple them. I will teach them what you have taught me. Thank you, God, for pouring into me so that I can pour into others. I receive the call. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Church, let's give God one big shout of praise to end this service. We love you, church. God bless you. If you need prayer at all, come up here.